In today's economy, more people than ever are looking to buy and sell businesses. But how do you do it? Welcome to The Deal Board, presented by Transworld Business Advisors. Straight talk about real deals and real people. Listen to stories, interviews, and expert advice to help your business sale, merger, or acquisition process. Now, here are your business exit experts, Andy and Jessica. Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to our episode on the pet care industry. So today, we've got a couple great interviews, but we're talking all things pet care, and it's a huge industry, right, Andy? It's a huge industry. Worldwide, over $200 billion uh, industry with over $55 billion spent in the United States. I think uh, my daughter spends that on her dog. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't, uh, I, I really can't judge anybody either because my dog, Sailor, if you haven't seen him on Instagram, Sailor, the traveling dog, I think it says the average American spends $1,500 a year on their dog. Sailor's probably at least double that. But it's just been increasing year over year. The trends have been crazy for the last 20 years, right? Yeah, I mean, everybody loves their pets, uh, sometimes more than their kids. Uh, and uh, I know some people that freely admit that. So, uh, they, you know, it's a big thing. You know, it's funny. They were just, uh, we were doing some Bahama, Bahamian relief uh, this weekend. And uh, Tom Jones was over there with his boat. And he said the number one thing people wanted was pet food. I mean, people, yeah. you know, even in disasters, I mean, people are looking to take care of their animals. And it's, you know, it's a very personal thing to people. Yeah, it it is. And, and when it comes to business, obviously, it's a very passion-driven business. So um, the two experts we talk about today talk about that in length. But it is an industry, if you're passionate about pets, if you're passionate about dogs, yes, it's a great fit um, for either buying a business or if you're trying to get out to sell a business, it's a great market right now. But there's a lot of other things you have to consider. It's still a business. So... Yeah, it's still a business, but there's some great uh, people that we interviewed today. One of them is Tim Vogel from Sandhound. Uh, he was also from Pet Groomery, and he talks a little bit about why they kind of switched from Pet Groomery to Sandtown. But Sandtown is a, a, a franchise that you can invest in. I love this franchise. You bring your dog there. Uh, it gets bathed while you're shopping, and uh, you come back, and he talks about all the reasons why uh, you want to keep your dog groomed and, and, and actually uh, bathe. So it's, a, it's an incredible interview. Right. And, and then I also interview my good friend, Heidi Canal. She founded Camp Bow Wow, which is really the first of its kind doggy daycare. I, I love, I tell her all the time, my favorite thing that she did was she put video cameras in the doggy daycare. She was the first one to do it. And I have her to think that every time I'm on a flight, I'm just staring at my dog playing. <laughs> but Camp Bow Wow, huge success. It's the number one pet care franchise. Um, it's been around since about 2000. And she talks a lot about her story of founding the company, which is overcoming a lot of adversity. And then the eventual exit that she did just a few years ago. Yeah. And we also see a lot of independent pet uh, businesses for sale. Uh, and they sell for pretty solid multiples when they're making money, right? Yeah. I mean, we see one and a half to three times in general, um, but they're great businesses. You have a lot of recurring revenue. Is it a sticky product? People are going to bring their pets back to the same place over and over again. Um, and really healthy sales for people that are looking to get out of it, um, but also still a lot of opportunity for people who are looking to buy. Yeah, it's a great business. And it, and we have a great episode to talk about the pet industry. I'm sure we could do another one on the pet industry someday, but this is a great starter. Right, definitely. And we've got some deals of the week, a really great listing of the week that we have for sale in Colorado, if ever, anyone's looking to relocate out here. Um, so lots of good information. Hope you take some good nuggets out of this one. Yeah, let's get to it. Transworld Business Advisors is the world's largest business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions firm with over 500 brokers in nearly 200 offices worldwide. Transworld's team handles thousands of business sales every year. To be connected with a qualified business broker or learn more about the buying and selling process, visit tworld.com forward slash the deal board or call 888-719-9098. Hey, we're back and we have a very special guest, a guy I've known for a long time, uh, an incredible entrepreneur. He's been out there building businesses in the pet industry for a while, and he has a newer franchise. It's been around for a while, uh, but he'll tell you that story. And his name is Tim Vogel, and he is from Sentown. And welcome, Tim. Thanks for coming on today. Andy, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure. 
So give us a little bit of background to how you've now come to Sandtown. And I know you were in the uh, mobile pet grooming business as well. And uh, we were talking a little bit beforehand about how uh, that, while it's an incredibly, and you could talk a little bit about the pet industry itself, how uh, it's not the easiest industry to kind of get started in. Yeah. You know, so it's funny, a really quick, funny story is, uh, when I had first gotten married, my wife said, let's get a dog. And I said, no way. You know, I want to, I want to go to the bar after work. I want to hang out with my friends. It's an additional responsibility. Well, well she won. And lo and behold, I absolutely fell in love with the dog. And, <laughs> and that's how it and, always works, right? Yeah. And, and, and as I was looking for kind of my next career move, you know, I was really looking to jump into the entrepreneurial world. I was looking at industries. I was looking at different things that would be of interest to me. And the, the, the pet space was growing tremendously. Uh, I obviously had a passion for my dog. And uh, so I started looking at grooming and mobile pet grooming is where I landed. And so after a lot of very serious conversations with my wife and a lot of uh, salesmanship, I uh, finally convinced her that it was a great idea. And so we started a mobile pet grooming business. Wow. Um, yeah. And so the idea was I'd start a mobile pet grooming business and I'd franchise it. And after getting into it and starting this business, uh, I learned very quickly that I wasn't nearly as smart as I thought I was. And there was a whole lot of things I didn't know. And that's what started me on this journey of trying to create a scalable business within the pet industry. And so, you know, there's a whole lot of challenges in this industry, which is kind of what you're asking about. And some of the biggest challenges is that there's no licensing anyone in the nation uh, for groomers. So hmm. anyone can become a groomer. Uh, anyone can call themselves a groomer. If, that's kind of scary. Licensing. Yeah. And so finding just a consistent level of quality, knowledge, and skill was one of my biggest challenges. And when I thought about um, uh, me franchising this to somebody, I just thought the risk would be huge around, you know, them finding and keeping qualified technicians. And so I actually solved it by partnering with a grooming school, putting them through school, finding the right uh, candidates, hiring them, putting them through school, and then having them do an earn out on their tuition over time. But that certainly wasn't scalable. So right. that was one of the, the first big problems we had to address. So, so what led this sent town? Yeah. So, you know, one of the, so, so addressing the problem of um, qualified technicians is I really, I went out to one of the largest grooming schools in the nation and I, I bought their curriculum and uh, I couldn't do that in mobile. So we said, let's open our, uh, a storefront, a retail location where we can put, an apprenticeship program in place where we actually train our own groomers. And that led to another business called pet groomery, which we did styling. Um, and as we did that, we we found that we had success, a lot of success with that, but it still took us a year really to make a good qualified groomer that knew all of the breed standard haircuts and could do all the artistic work. And so it still wasn't scalable. So two, a couple of things happened. One is how could we simplify the trimming process and, and improve the, the, the time to get someone up to, to speed as a technician. And two, we really discovered in the marketplace that the entire pet ownership space had moved, but the industry hadn't. Hmm. And so that was really a big insight for us. So if you think about it, pet grooming is really about haircuts. And when you really evaluate the number of breeds owned in this country, it comes out to about 75, 80% of dogs in this country don't need a haircut, mm. but, but all dogs need care, uh, basic preventive routine maintenance. So for example, 80, up to 80% of dogs by the age of three have some form of periodontal disease. And if you cared for your dog's teeth on a regular basis, you could extend their life anywhere from two to five years. Wow. Most people, most people don't know that. And so dogs in, mean something different in our lives these days. They're, they're, family members now, their companionship, yeah, where they absolutely. used to be about herding the sheep, picking up the duck out of the middle of the lake, getting rats out of your house. They, they really no, no longer serve those functions and they really come into the house. I think the statistic is like 60% of dogs sleep in her bed. Uh, and so the entire industry and grooming is focused on haircuts, but no one's really focused on a clean, healthy dog. Wow. And so we completely shifted and that was, that became the, the creation of scent hounds. So scent is actually an acronym, skin, coat, ears, nails, and teeth, the five core areas that all dogs need care. And we basically made it so that um, 
it was fast, easy, and affordable for customers to get the basic care for their dog, even if they didn't need a haircut. So for 25 bucks once a month, you could bring your dog in and we will give them a bath, we'll clip their nails, clean their ears, and brush their teeth, and they can be in and out of the doors in 15 minutes. Wow. And that, that, that was really the revolution. And then we, we combined that with being in grocery store anchored shopping centers. And so now what people are doing is where their dog used to be at the bottom of their laundry list of things to do, they can now drop the dog off, go to the grocery store, pick the dog up and come home. So they can combine their errands and effectively knock one more item off their list without much additional effort. Wow. That's a, a great model. So tell us a little bit about the opportunity. I mean, it sounds like a great opportunity. You know, I, I, I keep harping on it, but you know, there's so many young kids out there and, the, and, and we see young kids coming out of college and parents put all this money into educating their kids and then they don't have anything really to do. And I'm like yeah. thinking, why aren't they yeah. investing in franchises and why aren't they buying businesses? And what a better business for, you know, someone that is, you know, well-educated, that has motivation, that needs, uh, that loves pets. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think there's, there's kind of a couple big things in the marketplace that are changing the workforce. And so one of those things is automation. So a lot of jobs are disappearing due to automation. And we're just in one of those sweet spots that this is kind of one of those things that's hard to automate. And we have a market that's increasing by 4% year over year and has been for the last 20 some years. So the pet industry is forecasted to be a $75 billion industry this, this year. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, so this is a real opportunity where you could own your own business and, while doing something you're passionate about. And really, uh, our, our overall vision is to inspire a world where dogs and their humans love and connect on a da daily basis. And our mission is to remove the barriers so humans can connect with their dogs on a daily basis. So mm. really, at the end of the day, you know, our entire staff and crew and everybody that works with us is passionate about what we do because we're actually helping people practice love. You know, that's essentially what it is, is we think dogs represent unconditional love. You remove the barriers so that people are connecting with them on a daily basis. We're helping people practice love every day. And, and that's a pretty cool mission to be on. That's a great mission. It's <laughs> an awesome yeah. mission. So, uh, you know, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, obviously uh, they could go to sendtown.com, uh, but, you know, how else could they get in touch with you? Yeah, so sendtownfranchise.com is is got um, kind of the entire story. So if you want to know anything about kind of what it looks like to be a franchisee, what 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 are the, the key characteristics of someone we think would be successful here, how much does it cost, what a good location, it's all on our website, sendtownfranchise.com. And you can just, you know, if you want to get in touch with us, just say, hey, get in touch with me. And uh, it takes you to a form that will get you a call that day. So that's probably the easiest way. That's great. And I encourage you to check us out at our Facebook page. Uh, you know, it's just at Scent Hound on, France, uh, on Facebook or our Instagram page. And you can see kind of behind the scenes people working with dogs and you can kind of see a little bit of our culture there. That's great. And, and, and you did mention, I want you to mention one more thing. I want you to mention, uh, what you think the perfect franchisee looks like What you know, what does it take to be a good scent town franchisee? Yeah. So I think the first thing is you got to love dogs. If you don't like, forget it, yeah. <laughs> it's not the place for you, but if you love being around dogs, I mean, what an awesome, what an awesome job. Um, I think you've, you know, you've also got to be community minded. Like we do a lot of stuff. So we raise money for the local uh, rescue leagues. We have a program called the clean start. So we are very involved in the community. And I think hands-on, you know, someone who's really um, wants to roll up their sleeves and, and, and be a part of the operation, I think that's the, the quickest path, path to success. It uh, doesn't mean that you've got to do it forever, but as you're building that business, we really want someone that's going to be in there really guaranteeing that uh, the systems and processes are being followed and that, um, you know, our, our core values are being followed. And our number one core value is dog first. So making sure that uh, every single dog that comes into our care, we're treating it if it was our own dog. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Uh, pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey, Andy, do you know what time it is? It's time for our deal of the week. Deal of the week. Sold. Hey, we're back and it's deal of the week and this is our pet episode. So we have a pet sale for you. Uh, a very nice sale, and we have a special guest, our San Diego team, uh, Hall of Fame winner, uh, Marshall Pollock from 
Trans World Business Advisors of San Diego North or North San Diego. And uh, he and uh, Steve and Hansen run a great office out there. And uh, Marshall, welcome. Thanks, Andy. Good to be with you. So you had a mobile pet grooming business that was a pretty successful one, right? Oh, it was a great one. Uh, it was a uh, fairly good size, doing about a million dollars a year in sales, uh, serving all of San Diego County. Uh, they had 11 uh, very high-end mobile pet grooming vehicles, uh, had uh, 13 groomers and a couple of people in the office. Wow. Um, sale price was $525,000. Uh, uh, was uh, partially paid by a SBA loan at $350,000. Um, and uh, it was a great deal uh, for both parties. The uh, seller's discretionary earnings were around $215,000, which was just about 2.5 times yeah. uh, the earnings uh, sure. for seller's discretionary earnings. And, it, you know, wow, I mean, that's a big operation, you know, that many pet groomers and, uh, and vans. And so uh, what kind of buyer were you able to find? Actually, it uh, was an interesting uh, – Buyer. He came out of a completely different industry. It was uh, a, um, a tech person from a very large tech company in San Diego who was looking for an alternate source of income for himself and his wife. And uh, they thought that the pet industry was a you know rapidly growing, very stable industry, which I think it is. And this was something that attracted them uh, because of uh, partly the multiple and partly because of the stability of the business. Yeah, that, that sounds like a great deal. And we see that so often that where buyers don't come from the industry. So many people just think that uh, buying a business, you wind up in the same industry you were in. And and that's the beauty of buying a, an existing business because the old owner is there to train you and transition. So it sounds like a great deal. SBA financed. uh it must have had good books and records. The records were really good. This was a business that was started uh, about 15, 16 years ago by a gentleman who had retired from corporate America. And uh, he came in with him and his wife and started off with one truck and uh, grew, it, grew it into a very good sized business. There you go. Another and now they're living, living a good life as a retiree. There you go. And that's another reason to keep good books and records. You get cash at closing and you get a good multiple. So it sounds like a great business and a beautiful place to live in San Diego. And if somebody else wanted to call you up and live in San Diego or sell a business or buy a business in San Diego, how best to get in touch with you? Well, they can call me at 760-607-0641 or email me at mpollock at tworld.com. Great. Thank you, Marshall, for coming on today. I really appreciate it and uh, great business. Thanks for having me, Andy, and uh, have a great day. Welcome back to the show, everybody. And today, as you know, we're focusing on the pet care industry. And I have the privilege of having one of the top entrepreneurs in the pet care industry with us today, Heidi Ganahl, who is the founder of Camp Bow Wow, which is the largest pet care franchise in the U.S. So Heidi, welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you on. Thanks, Jess. I'm very excited to talk about dogs and kitties and any other pets you want to chat about. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't you just start by giving the listeners a little bit of background about Camp Bow Wow, you know, kind of what it is and, and why you started it. Sure. Well, it started basically solving a problem for myself and my husband. We had two big dogs, uh, big rescue mutts that we didn't really find a place that we were comfortable with leaving when we traveled. And this was back in the early 90s when it was the old school kennels with the concrete chain link, and it was just not cool for the dog. So we started thinking about that and what it might look like. And about that time, opened up one of the first doggy daycares in the western United States, right next to my dad's business down in Inglewood. And we fell in love with the concept. Um, Bai and I would run over there and, and watch the dogs play and take our own dogs. And it was just 30, 40 dogs milling around in a warehouse. But we just thought it was amazing, and the dogs were having a great time. So we fancied up the business plan, added a mountain lodge theme to that concept, added boarding and training, and wrote the business plan for Camp Bow Wow. But about six months after we wrote the business plan, and while we were still trying to figure out how we'd ever pay for this, we were in our early 20s, um, my husband's 25th birthday was coming up, and our family bought him a surprise gift to go up in an old stunt plane that our family friend owned, who was the United Airlines pilot. Well, they did all the stunts, and they went to do a flyby over my folks, 
and the plane crashed into the ground and both Bayan and the pilot Cliff were killed instantly. So obviously my life changed pretty dramatically at that point. And for five years, I managed to mess a lot of things up. I, I got a big settlement from the plane crash and I wasted most of that. I got remarried and quickly divorced, but had a beautiful daughter out of the deal. And so five years later, my little brother comes to me and says, you're, you're kind of a mess. We need to get you back on track. How about we take out that old business plan for Camp Bow Wow? And so I took the last 80000 of my savings and put it into the very first camp, which we started in late 2000. Right. And I mean, I mean, amazing story, a lot of adversity that you overcame. And I know you talk a lot about that, you know, so you get the, get the first location up and running, you know, cats and dogs go wild, pun intended, obviously, (laughs) but you know, what happened about that? What, What happened after that? What really spurred your growth or inspired you to grow bigger than just that single location in Denver? Well, one of our clients had a, um, Uh, Her dad was a veterinarian up in North Denver, and he had a small space available next to his vet clinic, and she convinced him to talk to us about putting a camp out there. So we opened the second location up there in Broomfield. That went really well, and one of our clients there was in franchising and suggested that we look into franchising Camp Bow Wow. I knew nothing about it, had never thought about franchising before. I maybe thought we might have three or four locations, and, and that was a great day. That'd be awesome. Um, And that was how I envisioned we'd grow. But I liked the idea of franchising because I could lead the vision and the overall view of the brand and how we were going to grow, but have the help of individual operators, the franchisees, to help run the day-to-day operations of each unit and, um, you know, let me work more on the vision side. So we looked into it. I went to the International Franchise Association meeting, met some great people who mentored me, and we sold our first franchise within a few weeks. Which is, yeah, it's a great, it's a fun journey, right? And it's fun to put other people in business too, I'm I'm sure as a franchisor. Um, And I know you have a really great story about how the franchise blew up, but how, how, why don't you tell the listeners that story about how you guys, you know, became the number one pet care franchise or what the impetus was for all those sales? Well, I think it was a few different things. The first thing was my brother thought to put a webcam in our second camp or in our first camp. Um, at the second location we had. And it was just this old X10 camera that sat up on a pole and took a picture every 60 seconds and posted to the internet. But it was awesome. People loved it. They couldn't, they couldn't stay off of the webcam and watching their dogs, even though back then it was just a picture posted every 60 seconds and very low quality. But that gave people insight into kind of their dog's experience and that they were having a good time and they didn't need to worry about them. The second thing was um, once we started franchising, we had to get really good at presenting to zoning and planning commissions because doggy daycare was new uh, to the market and planning folks and zoning folks didn't know what to do with us. They didn't know how to categorize the facilities. They thought we were more like kennels. And um, so they would say, you need to be out in the country. Like, nope, we need to be in the city where it's easy for people to get to. We had to talk a lot about waste, drainage, and noise and ended up building an in-house real estate department, which had that expertise. And I think that really made a big difference for us. And the final thing was, after we'd been franchising about 18 months, uh, we were featured on the cover of America Online, when that was really the only internet back in 2005, and um, as the next great franchise. And it had a picture of me with a little yellow laptop. And we got a couple thousand franchise sales leads from that one day alone, and things just took off from there. Oh, yeah. It's a great combination of, you know, innovation, getting, you know, processes and systems right with the zoning and the real estate, and then also some press and marketing. So, you know, great story leading up to a lot of amazing success for the brand. But eventually you decided that it was time to sell um, or time to have Camp Bow Wow move on to its next chapter. So why did you decide to do that? What was kind of the, the, um, the instigation for that uh, decision? Well, so my business career went was going pretty well, but uh, on the personal front, I, you know, hadn't really I hadn't found love again, and I was pretty focused on the business um, and wasn't thinking too much about it. But I was set up on a blind date and uh, ended up, you know, falling big time for this for this guy Jason, who ended up being my husband now, and we um, had I had my twelve year old Tori, 
but Jason was a bit younger than me and wanted to have a couple more kids. And so we did and ended up with Holly, who's now 10, and the twins, who are now seven. So at that point, oh gosh, it must have been 2013, I had three kids under the three and a teenager and thought, oh my gosh, I can't do all this. It's a bit much running the day-to-day of a growing business and having these little ones at home. So I decided to look at bringing in strategic investors or selling the brand and was connected through an investment banker to BCA, the big veterinary chain. And it was a really good match. Uh, Got along great with the founders of BCA. And they were really looking for a complimentary brand out of the veterinary space. And it was a good match. So we sold, um, I sold the business in late 2014. And uh, it was a a pretty good deal as far as us getting along and the transition. You know, you hear a lot of war stories about selling your business. But overall, it was a great experience for me. And I stayed on as CEO for a couple of years and then transitioned out. And now I'm just a client. I have a big a big lab that goes to Camp Bow Wow every once in a while. Yeah, I was going to say, now still a big proponent of Camp Bow Wow and the entire brand. Um, but I, as you know, like our listeners um, mainly are interested in buying and selling businesses. So in, in terms of your sale, you know, what advice would you give someone that's considering selling their business um, or maybe even already in the process? Like what advice would you give them and what did you learn from going through the process yourself? I'd say buckle up and get ready for a bumpy ride. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like a video game. There's just always new things coming at you from all angles when you go through a sale. And it never quite ends up the way you think it's going to, but that's not always a bad thing. I think you have to surround yourself with really talented people that have been through this before, like you and Al and, and um, folks that have a level head and can take the emotion out of it. And you just have to stand your ground and hold for what's right for your brand, but also be reasonable and understand that, you know, when you sell, you have to let go of it a bit and let people take it in a new direction if that's the case, or, you know, hopefully they'll honor the brand that you built while also giving it new energy and uh, different direction to grow it even more. Right. Yeah. Great. I mean, great advice. It is. It's hard, right? It's, it's a hard process to go through. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of motion. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's ends up being the right thing for you and, and for your brand, hopefully. And then on the flip side, Heidi, we do have people that are listening that are thinking about buying a business and the pet care industry is one of the top inquiries we get when we're um, huh. dealing with buyers. So what advice would you give somebody looking to buy, whether it's a franchise or a non-franchise in the pet care industry, what should they be looking for when they're buying a business? Well, I think you really need to dig into the day-to-day operations. Like what is it like to be an owner of this business? What is, you know, am I tied to the business 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year because if it's a kennel or a hoarding operation, you will be. Or is it, uh, you know, a manufacturing business or um, a retail business where you have a little bit more flexibility? And then you have to think about the industry and where it's going and the future of the industry. When we were selling Camp Bow Wow, I was, I was pretty um, upfront that we would have to make some changes around technology and really get on board with the uberfication of pet care, so on-demand pet care, which I think you've seen Ro- Rover and uh, some of the other brands grow very quickly. And so um, I, I was sensitive to the changes that were going to need to be uh, taking place. And I think that's how you have to look at a business if you're going to buy it in the pet care space, because things are changing really dramatically based on technology right now. Yeah, very fast. And yeah, Rover, WAG, they're all doing really well right now. And I know everybody's very passionate, especially the people that get involved in the pet care industry are very passionate about their work and the business. But you also have to kind of look at some of the the back end stuff too and future and what that holds. So all great advice. Um, and then lastly, before we let you go, Heidi, I know you're working on a great new project, um, supporting women and their growth and mentorship. And actually you're going to be on our show next week as well about women in business, but tell us a little bit about your new project. Sure. It's called She Factor, like S-H-E Factor. And it came out of my, um, my daughter coming home from college, she went to University of Oregon her senior year over spring break and just being somewhat paralyzed about what to do next. And of course, I'm the smart-ass mom who says, well, let's go get a job. (laughs) It's not always that easy. 
And I think young people have so many choices these days, whether it's the gig economy, being an entrepreneur, working in a corporation. And so She Factor is a book, an app that goes with it that you can download for free. And then live squads or chapters around the country that we're just uh, launching this month to help with networking and connection. And then we have a podcast and a blog. It's just this really robust community, digitally and live, of young women that are just starting out their lives. And hopefully we can provide tools and tactics and lots of, you know, connection and events to help them navigate that. Yeah. Very exciting. A lot of great content. Um, if you're a woman looking to decide what you're going to do with your life or how to approach it, especially if you're in that millennial generation or a lot of them are exiting college right now and graduating, we'll drop the links um, into our show notes, but you can also find them. She Factor has a podcast, an app, like Heidi said. Um, but Heidi, thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing your wisdom and your story. And we wish you the best of luck with She Factor and all your projects in the future. Well, thanks. And I'll end the way I used to when I talked about Camp Powell. Everybody have a doggone great day. (laughs) That's great. Thanks, Heidi, so much. Thank you. Hey, Jessica, you know what time it is? Money time? Almost. It's time for Listing of the Week. Welcome back, everybody. And today, our focus is the pet care industry. And I have Gary Goldwasser from our Transworld Business Advisors Rocky Mountain office joining us for a Listing of the Week. Gary, welcome to the show. Thanks. Good to be here. So tell us a little bit about this listing you have for sale. Yeah. So this is uh, brand new on the market and um, business started in 2006. Uh, it's a growing industry in the pet resort kennel business. They uh, have 60 to 95 uh, dogs that they take care of daily. Uh, the business is growing. It does about $350,000 in um, SDE, and we're selling it for $980,000. Comes with seven acres of real estate in this really nice setup, kind of a barn, artificial turf, really good, clean uh, kennels. And uh, the uh, land is appraised at about $1.62 million. Great. Well, it sounds like the perfect deal for someone who's passionate about animals, wants to live in Colorado, kind of sounds like it's the best of like the business, like the work-life balance everyone's chasing. Yeah. uh, We've had a lot of activity for like a husband and wife team. Um, It's in an area that's really growing in the uh, Denver metro area. And um, yeah, if, if you're passionate about pets, this is a great opportunity and exciting Great. So Gary, if somebody wants to learn more about this listing or anything else you have for sale in the Denver area, how do they reach you? They can reach me at 303-748-7420 or at gary at tworlddenver.com. Great. And we'll pop that into the show notes too. Gary, thanks again for coming back on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for tuning into our show today. If you like the podcast, don't forget to subscribe through your favorite podcasting app and leave us a review. If you have questions or suggestions for the show, visit us at tworld slash the deal board or email us at the deal board at tworld.com.